What's up YouTube family? So I know the setup is a little different today, but I'm really serious about this budgeting thing. So here is my budget by paycheck workbook that you guys saw me have bound and print and go through all of that stuff. So here it is. And I'm going to be turning the book like this way, which I know will probably work better for y'all since my setup is like at an angle. But this is how I write. I don't know why. I just, it has to be on a slant for me. So we're going to open it up and we're going to start with the first couple of pages, just going over like what my financial goal is for 2021, you know, all that good stuff. And then you're going to see this a lot in this book. Like my printer doesn't do double-sided so it all had to be printed out on one sheet. So I tried to like turn some pages together and whatnot, but then it's so many pages in this book that I just gave up. And so it's a lot of white space, but it's whatever at this point. So, okay, stop the rant. But the first page you come to is the uh, title, not the title page, but basically like this workbook belongs to your name and then it found kindly contact. I left that blank because I don't plan on this book ever leaving the house, so it shouldn't get lost and no need for somebody to contact me. So this is the first page and then as we turn and I'll flip this in half, I already filled some of this stuff out because I didn't want this video to be super long. So I filled out the pages and then after we go through the first couple of pages up until the first paycheck, then we'll start with the cash stuffing. So my financial plan, this is the goal worksheet. So my first financial plan is to save $1,000 towards retirement. And like I know with like my job and everything that they put aside money for my retirement and stuff, but I just wanna set aside, like have my own personal retirement account so my goal is to save $1,000. And at first I was gonna to try to drag it out for the year, but then I was like, no, $1,000, that's not a huge amount. So I should be able to get that fairly easy because you know, since we're military, it's not like we have a lot of bills to pay. Like the most we have is we both own our cars. Well, I own my car, Thomas has payments. So our finances, first and foremost, are very separate. Like we're married, but our finances are separate. Like Antigua and Barbuda, Turks and Caicos, like they're together, but they're separate. So um, he has a car payment, car insurance, and like his bills, and then I own my car, so I just have car insurance, two credit cards, and yeah, student loans, but they're not a problem right now. So um, I was thinking back to the retirement. <laughs> so I was thinking like, okay, $1,000 shouldn't be that hard for me to raise because I don't have really any other big bills. So I gave myself a six month timeline for that. So I wanna raise $1,000, we'll save $1,000 in six months. So by June 1st of 2021, I wanna have $1,000. And then once I reach that $1,000 goal, I'm gonna put it in a CD and kinda of just forget about it so that it can continue to like gain money. And then once the CD, the mature date comes for the CD, then I'll just add another $1,000 to it and put it back in a CD. So that is my plan for the retirement. <sighs> to save money for it, put that saved money in a CD at the bank, let it mature, and then once it matures, put another saved amount back in and just repeat the cycle over and over and over and over. Okay, and then I also wanna save $1,000 towards my emergency fund. So if things pop up, I just wanna have money set aside that way I'm not grabbing from one bill or category in order to pay for this unexpected thing. I just want to have emergency money. 
So I also gave myself a six month timeline for that. So June 1st as well. And then I wanna save for a birthday trip. I didn't get to do anything for my birthday this year or for my 30th birthday. Like my 31st birthday, we were in quarantine because Thomas was sick. And my 30th birthday, didn't really get to do much. We were in Jersey, I had both boys, no babysitter. There was nothing really to be done. So for my 32nd birthday, I wanna do something that I wanna do. Like I actually wanna go out and do something. And I know you're all gonna be like, oh girl, where you going? What you trying to do? Don't laugh, okay? Like you can laugh if you want to, I don't even care because this is what I wanna do. I have not been to Universal Studios to go to like the Harry Potter Hogwarts section. Listen, I grew up with that man, okay? Me and Harry Potter are like this. I own two copies of every book, one that I read and the other one that I just let collect, that I collected so they are in pristine condition. Like, I need to go to Hogwarts. I need to see it, I need to experience Experience it. I need to get a wand from all of Anders. I need, I need the experience. All right, that is my whole childhood in them books. So that's what I want to do for my birthday. So I, the plan is to save five thousand. And my thinking is, and I know you're like five thousand. That's a lot for Hogwarts. But listen, most likely I'm going to be bringing the boys with me they should get to experience Harry Potter too because he's just that great. So that's airfare for me and both boys, plus a hotel, which honestly we might not need a hotel because I had um, paid for a trip like last year or the year before. Yeah, the year before. I had paid for a trip but was unable to take it like just with everything going on. And I was unable to take it to so like the deadline for when I had to book the trip passed. So they called me yesterday and were like, hey, you still have your vacation. You have money towards it. Like, would you like to take it again? Like all you have to pay is like, I think it was like a $50 fee to give me another 18 months. So I paid the $50. So now I have another 18 months to take a trip, which works for me because they actually have um, rooms in Orlando, so that is perfect. So our hotel is covered, but that's airfare for me and the boys, round trip. And then, again, I told you, I want to fully experience everything. So buying souvenirs and just doing all the great stuff, so I figured 5000 would be enough. And even if I don't make that, if I land somewhere close to it or, like, at least... In the 2000 range, 3000, I'll be happy. So I gave myself until October 1st to meet this goal because I figured, you know, can't wait till November because I still need to book flights and such. So gave myself till October 1st of 2021. And then going down here, I want to save $2,000 in my savings account. This is separate from the emergency fund, separate from the retirement fund. Like just in my savings alone, I wanna have $2,000. So I gave myself um, the full year to do that. So December 31st, 2021, that is my goal. And I like how she, the budget mom uh, did this financial plan because for, the, for these things, this is my short-term goal. So everything that I wanna accomplish within one year and then coming down here, these are my midterm goals. So within five years. And so I want to get a new car. Like, even though I own my car right now and I love not having a car payment, I can feel that my baby is slipping. She is not going to be with me much longer. So I'm going to need to get a new car. So I at least want to save $6,000 towards a down payment on the car. And I am hoping that I can do that. I'm going to have to like aggressively save for this because I called my baby 
the Black Widow. And I'm telling you, she's she's like on her last leg. I can feel it. She's not driving as smooth as she used to. So, but I mean, that's to be expected. She has like 235,000 miles on her. So, so it's to be expected. Her time is coming. But I gave myself until January 1st of 2023 to have that money saved. And I pray that the Black Widow will last that long. I pray that she will. I'm going to be real kind and gentle and nice to her. And hopefully she'll last me until then. Um, and then the next one is for my company website for By Her Hand, Silpery. We need a website. We're on Etsy right now. But I kind of just don't want to be on Etsy anymore. Like with all the fees and the extraness, I just want my own website. I just feel like that's what a legitimate business has a, its own independent website. So that is what I want to do. So I want to save $3,000 for that. And that is to cover like hiring a web designer because I have no idea what I'm doing. Like I had paid for... Um, a hosting site for Wix for like a year to do my own website and I was going to try to do it myself but I tried it and I was so lost and confused and had no idea what I was doing so that's the pay for a web designer to set up the website like inventory all that just a business website so I want to save 3000 for that and that I want to do by January 1st of 2022 and then I want to get my master's degree. I already have my bachelor's. Right now I am in the process of trying to get um, my certificate to be a drug and alcohol counselor. But I still want to get my master's. Because I feel like you just need it. So I want to save $10,000 towards going to get my master's degree. I don't even know like how financial aid will work, like if I'll still qualify for it. I have no idea, but I feel like $10,000, if I save that much, it'll at least get me through like the first semester, if not the first two semesters. So the first year of my master's. And then I'll just have to like apply for scholarships and such. But I at least wanna have 10,000 on my own to put towards getting my master's degree. And then down here is the long-term goal, so that's within 10 to 15 years. And the first is a new house. I don't know how long Thomas intends on doing this military thing, if he's going to do the full 20 or not. But listen, I am so over just moving and moving and moving and moving. Like even now he's talking about... He's about to do green and gold and he has to go to school. So now he's looking into schools, but the schools he's looking into are on the East Coast. So that would mean we would have to move again. I'm I'm kind of over it, guys. So I want to have a house. Like we'll get a house and we'll wait for him at the house while he does his soldier thing. Um, but I at least on my own to put towards the house because, you know, he has VA loans and all that stuff. But just for me personally... I want to be able to come to the table with at least 15000 to put towards that house. That way I feel like I'm doing my part and contributing. So I gave myself a goal of November 1st, 2030. So is that possible? Maybe. If I stay determined and dedicated, it should be. Um, but again, if it's anywhere within there like what's the saying shoot for the moon even if you miss you'll land among the stars like even if I don't make 15,000 by November 1st of 2030 and I don't get 15,000 that'll be fine if I'm somewhere in like the 10,000 range that's cool with me and then the last thing the most dreaded thing my student loans hopefully I will be able to be debt free as far as my student loans go. I hate Sally Mae with a passion and I'm so ready to be done with her. So I gave myself until December 31st of 2030 to if not have paid my student loans off to be close to being done with them. 
because I'm so over the emails and the phone calls. Like, just please leave me be. Leave me alone, Sally Mae. Okay, so the second page here is the membership and subscriptions reminder worksheet, which I really like this because it helps you keep track of all the things that you sign up for. Like, you know, sometimes you start a free trial and then next thing you know, you forgot that it's about to end and now you're tied into a plan. So this I'm grateful for. And I don't have that many memberships or subscriptions, but I still want to pare these down. Like I wish I could. So I have Netflix, which is $10.99. I have it for two screens, but it's kind of seeming like I'm going to need to up that to four screens because the boys take up all the Netflix all the time. Like you really have to wait until they go to bed and are asleep before you can watch Netflix because both their TVs are always on Netflix. So that'll probably go up. I don't want it to. Like I really, really don't because the goal is to save money and not be spending extra money. But I like to, like Stranger Things is why I keep Netflix. So I keep Netflix for Stranger Things. Amazon Prime, I keep this for ordering things and for the two day shipping. But you know, now the way the world has been working, your stuff doesn't even come in two days. So it's kind of irrelevant at this point. Um, even like Prime Video, it barely, like it's a hit or miss with Prime Videos. Very seldom do they have like really great movies that I like. So I don't keep it for the Prime Video. I purely just keep it for when I need to order things. And then Disney Plus. I keep Disney Plus for The Mandalorian. Like Disney Plus in itself does not have anything remarkable that like makes me just love it, love it. I only keep it for The Mandalorian. That is it. That is all. Like, I really only keep each one of these first three subscriptions for one aspect or one show. Like, I kind of feel like for what I'm paying for Netflix, Prime, and Disney+, Plus, we should just get cable. Like, I really feel like it would probably be less money for us to just get cable than for what we pay in subscriptions for these streaming services. But whatever. It is what it is. Um, and then Canva, I also pay for that. I'm actually thinking of switching to the yearly um, subscription for Canva because right now I pay the $12 a month for it, but I might just switch to the annual cost so that way I don't have to worry about making sure I keep the money in my account and don't pull it out. So yeah, I'm probably going to switch Canva to a yearly subscription. And then YouTube Premium. And I was kind of forced into YouTube Premium because on my phone, I had another music service. Um, it wasn't Slacker. It was, I can't remember what it was. It was something like Slacker, though. And somehow, some way, for whatever purpose, YouTube ended up, I guess, buying Slacker or whatever the actual... Um, radio service it was that I had that came with my phone that I had on my phone they ended up switching it like we didn't have the option of saying no we don't want that they just bought it and then I got an alert on my phone that says hey this radio service is no longer available you now have YouTube music so when it started with YouTube music like all my music transferred over but it was like 50 million commercials which I didn't have before like it was just a headache so then it gave me the option to get YouTube Premium, which was $15. So I was like, okay, I guess it's just what I'm going to have to do. So I ended up buying the YouTube Premium and upgrading. So now I do $15 a month for that. Okay, and then I also have my LifeSum app. Which is like my meal tracker app. And I paid that off for the year. And that was, I actually had like got it on sale. So I think I paid like $32 for that. So yeah, another one to the list. 
my meal tracker app. So that is already paid for. I think I don't have to uh, renew it again until August. Yeah, I think it's August that I have to renew that. I'll have to check it again for the actual date. But yes, that is all of my membership and subscriptions. Moving right along. So now this is my yearly savings goals and events. So again, I like how she, you like pick your major goals and then you do how much it's gonna cost you and then how much you're gonna save a month to reach that goal. And again, the due date. So for my first goal of saving $1,000 for retirement, that would be when broken down, it would be $166 a month that I would have to save if I'm going to do it within that six month time period. So that is $83 per paycheck that I need to save in order to make $1,000 by June 1st of 2021. And the same goes for my emergency fund, which is also $1,000 with the same due date. So that is $83 per paycheck that I need to save in order to meet my goal by the required due date. And then if I decided to drag it out for the whole year, like if I decide to change the my emergency fund, keep it at $1,000, but instead of giving it six months, do it for the whole year, I think it'll break down to like 40 something dollars. So that I would have to save per paycheck. So yeah, she helps you break it down so that way you know what exactly you have to save. And then for $2,000 for savings, um, that again is also $83 per paycheck, but that of course is over the course of the whole year. And then for my birthday trip to Hogwarts, y'all see it, birthday trip to Hogwarts, because that's where we going. Okay, we might do other stuff, but the mission, the goal is to get to Hogwarts. Um, so that is gonna be $250 per paycheck that I need to save in order to make this goal. And I don't know if that'll be like completely possible. It is kind of like giving me a little sticker shock when I see $250 per paycheck. But I mean, again, I don't have any other real bills. Car insurance, subscriptions, and yeah, that's about it. I don't really, credit cards, two credit cards. So that's about it. The rest of my paycheck is kind of just play money. So which is why I'm starting to budget for everything. So I can tell it where to go instead of just spending it all. So that should be possible. Like if I turn this into a bill, that should be very possible. Treat it like a bill and it I should be able to make it. So then this is the yearly savings tracker. So then I'll go in. So like for January put how much I'm beginning with for my first goal, what I already have saved towards that, what I add to it, and then at the end of the month, what my balance is as far as what I've saved towards that goal. So I like that. Can't fill that out yet because we haven't stuffed the envelopes yet. But moving on to the next. Okay, and now these sheets, this sheet here is not... This does not come with the Budget Moms book. This is actually a book that I had, a sheet that I had got off of Etsy. And it's from Sheets by JC. And when I was like going on this whole, I'm going to make my own budget planner kick kind of thing, I had bought these. So I just printed it out and added it to the Budget Moms book when I had it bound. So this is just a sinking funds tracker. So for retirement, emergency savings, my birthday trip and a new car, those are the main ones that I wanna focus on at the moment. Um, you just write in what your category is, what your goal amount is. So for retirement, $1,000. And then for each block, you designate how much each block is worth. So each block will be worth $50. And so as I save, $50 towards retirement, I'll color in a block, so forth and so on until my goal is met. And just it's just for the visual learners out there. So like if you don't wanna have to keep going in your envelope to count your money to see how much you've saved, you can just look at this sheet and see how many blocks you've colored in and there you go. So yeah, so for retirement and emergency, uh, each block is worth $50. 
And then for savings, each block is worth $100. For my birthday trip, each block is worth $250. And for my new car, each block is worth $300. So I'll have a visual representation of how far or how close I am to my goals. And it actually came with two sheets, so skip that. And we're moving right along. And then it goes into December. Can I take you there? 